to Houston Art Tribe. I am Kay Sarver and I am sitting here with Ken Mazu in his wonderful studio, by the way, um, in Mother Dog Studios, uh, which That's I think correct. is... Yeah. Yes, yeah, so uh, it's uh, a great part of Houston to, to be here at Mother Dog, for yeah. sure. So uh, yeah. uh, downtown, north side, so, uh, yeah. so very nice. Uh, and uh, I enjoy uh, working here very much. Uh, been here 21 years. I was going to ask so. you. My gosh, that's amazing. So, how did you come to be here? Did, was there some well, sort of? I think for for uh, a stroke of luck. I think uh, it was actually Paul Kittleson that uh, when I was leaving the University of Houston after graduating mm -hmm. graduate school, he mentioned uh, to look at Mother Dog Studios, mm -hmm. and uh, fortunately they had this exact space here available at that time. Yeah. And I think it was a very smart decision, being maybe a young artist fresh out of graduate school with debt yeah. to uh, <laughs> lease a studio that was affordable uh, mm -hmm. and uh, so I've got a lot of work done here over the years and, yeah. and it's been great uh, and, and hope to be here for a long time. So. It's amazing testament to uh, what a great space this is to be part of that you've been here so long you know and it's really refreshing I think to have this iconic art space stay in its virgin state more or less you know not be touched by development and well, uh, and that is significant. Uh, when I moved in here, Minute Maid Park, I don't think had been built. So you can see it from here. Yeah. And I think the neighborhood has changed uh, in yes. the downtown area yes. and around the studio uh, a lot since then in that amount yes. of time. And, and I guess if you are in an area long enough, if, uh, if there's growth, that's, that's natural. It's going to happen. It is going to happen. And I, I think that's the thing. And there's nothing wrong with this, but I do see you know, these art studios going up everywhere that are like super expensive, you know, very nice, but it's a, uh, wow, I, uh, it sort of like pushes artists out of where they started to develop something well, uh, if and they can't afford it. So. Yeah, and I think, uh, so the Commerce Street Artist Warehouse was the big thing uh, when I was yes. in graduate school and when I had gotten out. Yes. And, uh, and then, so that I think is gone. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember how many years ago, but that area changed, mm -hmm. and Diverse Works used to be across the street. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, East Freeway Studios, that was uh, a significant part of the art crawl and, and things yeah. that happened downtown, yes. uh, maybe before Washington Avenue Arts District had developed, uh, which is a yes. great thing. Yes. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, so, so we do feel like we're, uh, I guess, survivors here. We know oh. we've been here for a long time, and we hope to, to, to be here. Uh, yeah. for a long time as well uh, but it is very much in its raw state as you describe uh, 20 foot ceilings are very helpful in the summertime it, it does get warm yeah. and uh, uh, you know running fans uh, mm -hmm. we, we get this unique natural airflow through here uh, that creates its own kind of climate well, control. Well you can feel it now even yeah. I mean yeah I keep thinking where's that where's that AC vent but it's it's just that beautiful airflow coming through it's yeah, yeah so and I guess it's just so porous uh, that uh, you know that it works that way so uh, it's like my house <laughs> yeah, yeah well um, uh, no, this is great I love it I this actually makes me think too of like the first time I saw your work and I can't tell you now when this was but uh, it was one of your pieces that were like of the demolition of you know, Houston history, and I just remember being wowed by that. Partly because I've always been interested in in that anyway. That cross, that thing that seems to be speeding up around us. Uh, how did you? What sort of? Well, it's it's sort of a unique story, uh, and I've maybe had a lot of time to think about it. Um, uh, so, the whole thing that I tried to capture with it um, is really in two phases. It mm -hmm. began. Uh, maybe uh, sort of more than 10 years ago with photography as a source for abstraction. So I did see demolition taking place in the city and I felt like, you know, that would be great for abstraction. Yeah. And those ideas really never came uh, to, to fruition. Okay. So I think uh, I just put those ideas behind, mm -hmm. but maybe uh, five or six years later, maybe 10, uh, I think it was around uh, late 2007, maybe early 2008. Okay. Uh, the Hanover companies had demolished uh, uh, an area city block in Rice Village and I just stumbled upon it which was the chance encounter that was motivating for other times that I had photographed sites yes, like that. Yes. And at that moment I made two decisions uh, 
to get back into photographing the site, but also I wanted to not try to make an abstraction, maybe paint that uh, site exactly as I saw it, mm -hmm. to try to capture the, the feeling that I had the moment I discovered it, I think. Gosh, yeah. and, and it sort of maybe got me out of a transitional phase. I think every four or five years I enter a creative transition mm -hmm. and uh, either reinvent ideas or come into new ideas. Mm -hmm. And so that was more of a reinvention, uh, but it was sort of a return to the object and much more of a representational uh, phase for me. Yeah. Uh, and something that I stuck with for a long time. Yeah. Uh, but what happened with it was that uh, I think that was sort of the beginning of this period that we've been in over the last 12 years or so of exponential growth that's been taking place in yeah. the city. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. so, so you know, the the paintings are sort of about documenting that, and they, the idea has evolved a little bit over that time too. It, so. Yes, it has. I. It's funny because I remember before I even knew who had done it, and I think I, I was just learning who you were as well. But I remember thinking, you know. I just fell into the abstract forms and, and shapes and I saw, I recognized some patterns and maybe bricks or lines that, you know, were of demolition, but it just was genius, I thought. Well, uh, uh, that's flattering, um, <laughs> I, I think. Uh, it's true. I, there was, uh, like I have a little note that's pinned up on my wall of inspiration over there. Uh, I think it says to find the beauty in life, you must carry it with you. And I found that in an old book in a library, and uh, uh, so you know I kept the the piece because it was a, a fragment of uh, of something that someone left behind. Mm -hmm. And anyway, it stuck with me. And so I think about my work in that form because no matter what it is, I think that I'm aesthetically drawn to as an artist. Mm -hmm. I think I see the the beauty in it. And maybe not, uh, you know, people may look at a demolition site and not pay attention to it. Yes. But the fact that they find it unsightly or don't want to pay attention to it uh, and, and we're talking about contr controlled demolition not like a natural disaster or anything yeah, uh, yeah. malicious I yes, guess yeah. um, I think I was very interested in the transitional moment between the old and the new yeah. and I think that's something that we pay little attention to and I think if I paint that moment in time then uh, it's sort of documented and left behind to say this this was this is what was going on in Houston while I was here so. yeah and you know I can really appreciate that because I can't tell you how many times I literally noticed something definitely was missing and I couldn't even remember and unless it's in my own neighborhood area you know That's I couldn't yeah. even remember yeah. what it was and uh, yeah that always takes me back so. well and, and looking back on uh, the structures that I've painted um, uh, it's uh, sort of been focused on the downtown area or central Houston because uh, with this studio being downtown, it's mm -hmm. been a nucleus where, uh, with our loop system, I'm either uh, in my neighborhood, a little bit closer to Rice Village, but driving downtown and then back around the west side to go home or something yeah, like that. Yeah. So, uh, so Mother Dog has been the nucleus, but a yeah. lot of the redevelopment of downtown, the Houston Club, uh, the Chronicle, yes. um, and uh, and there were some older structures like the Ben Milam Hotel, mm -hmm. um, and uh, they date back. Uh, I think that one dates back to like 1926, possibly. Gosh, yeah. But there was a structure at uh, 509 Louisiana across from the Alley Theater, uh, and I think it was part of Lancaster Hotel expansion. Uh, okay. There were two properties there, and they both had to come down, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it was over a century old, you know. And uh, yeah. It's oh. it's great to hold on to that when cities can, but I guess it doesn't factor into the equation everywhere all the time because yeah. you need. Uh, you need a financial structure to, to save those things. I think so. that's it. It gets it gets more expensive than building something new. I, I think it all comes down to the yeah to the money yeah. issue. But yeah. So um, uh, <laughs> so anyway, um, I've I've been uh, I guess uh, fortunate to capture what things that I did sort of stumble onto. Yes. Um, and uh, and so it, it made for a really nice body of work and uh, still very much a part of what I do. But uh, but after sort of reinventing that idea for a while. Uh, I kind of feel like I need to explore other ideas too, just yeah, because of outside yes, interest and yes. and things like that. So, so the city, Houston, as itself, has been very inspirational. Oh yeah. I think yeah. for me, I'm from a small town, and uh, here Houston's like a big small town. I think. It is, yeah. Um, it's uh, so, but there's there's much more going on. I think it changes faster. Yeah. And maybe the mm -hmm. changes that take place more rapidly or good for artists, uh, whether they be writers, musicians, yeah. visual artists, to yeah. uh, you know, to latch on to and, and, and help ideas percolate, I think. So. It's so true, it's so true. And I, I'm glad you do adventure in other areas as much as I love that series.
stories in general. I mean, I can look at them for a while. I'm one of those nuts, though, that would take pictures of demolition because <laughs> I find it fascinating, you know. But you're, you're getting into, well, you've probably done this off and on all along, but your, your uh, landscapes, um, a Gulf Coast and East Texas, and those beautiful grasses, and I, I'm... Well, uh, it's it's a stark contrast, I guess. Uh, maybe the the uh, images that you highlighted right there mm -hmm. to to maybe what uh, I've sort of been drawn to within the city. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think I'm maybe starting to look outside the city for inspiration, um, just to uh, you know explore avenues that may be uh, avenues in life. I think that affect me or inspire me or influence me in a different way than maybe. Uh, what's been immediate in the city, I think. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think for me, too, the trick is to kind of figure out how it's all related yeah. uh, as well. And uh, so a lot of my regional life has been lived between the Nature's River and, say, the San Jacinto River here or the west side of Houston, things yeah. like that, this area, and then towards the coast. Mm -hmm. um, but even as a child, I guess I remember the experience of uh, leaving my hometown, Beaumont, to mm -hmm. just go down to the Bolivar Peninsula. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think the thing that stuck with me that I, as a child, that I carried here later in life and began to latch on to was this idea of uh, evidence of man and nature or uh, industrial decay and urban detritus. Yeah. So with the storm seasons that we have on the Gulf Coast, um, there was always some evidence of a weathered structure uh, or concrete emerging from the beach from the past storm season or something like that. So as a child, uh, it was very surreal, I think, to experience those things. Uh, and even, I still go to the coast to uh, maybe escape or get out of the city from time to time, but still find it very uh, inspiring. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then the flatness of our region, maybe uh, back towards the Beaumont area up here around Houston, uh, towards, uh, towards Galveston. Um, the ability to be able to see the distance uh, is very significant. Um, yes. And uh, I, I read a, an interview with Robert Rauschenberg at one time, and I think he had his home on Captiva at that time. And uh, he's from the Port Arthur area, I believe. Okay. Uh, uh, and it was interesting that when he talked about being in Captiva, that he's always known about himself, that he needed to be somewhere to see the distance. Oh, and I find that yes. significant with, with my experience in life too. Mm -hmm. My first experience with moving to the city um, for graduate school was that, that it was very compressing <laughs> and at times uh, often claustrophobic. And yeah. uh, so a lot of the compositions with uh, cityscape paintings or, uh, were, you know, maximal to where they sort of filled the composition. Yes. So yes. the images that are sort of coastal based or uh, uh, pastures and coastal plains that we have around here they're uh, antithetical to that in the sense mm -hmm. that uh, they're more spacious and open and sometimes more minimal. Mm -hmm. And so it's a real stark contrast in what I have been working with, yeah. uh, but I know there's a common denominator and that's really, I think, what I'm searching for as an artist is, uh, you know, I know this is a part of my life and I know that this is too, yeah. uh, and, and you know, how's it all related? So, it's it's yeah. very, I think that's very interesting because I, I, you know, I can only relate with my own personal uh, feelings and, and how when I do see at a distance you, you get a sense of the vastness of, of nature a bit and, and it's like we don't connect enough because we're in the city so much all the time you know really well uh, and, and, and the amazing thing about that is you can you can be immersed in maybe uh, all the activity of the city all the social or whatever's going on that, that keeps you there. You, you live in the city, I think, because there are things going on that you True. want to get out and do. But it's also easy to, uh, I mean, I spend time in the studio, oftentimes more, more so than I may be getting out to see exhibitions and things like that, which yeah, is important right. for an artist to do. Yes. Um, and uh, so there is that sort of dichotomy, and, and I guess uh, Edward Albee was right when he said uh, a delicate balance is really what it's all about. Oh so. my gosh, yes, yeah. just trying to keep that balance going. Yeah, yeah. So, well, and, and I'm thankful uh, too that uh, I guess that I met teachers that were influential uh, and sort of helped me find direction. Mm -hmm. uh, had very little ambition at age 18, which I think is a very important age to kind of have some direction in life. Oh, yeah. And uh, it was just mainly because I wasn't totally sure what I was interested in, and I knew maybe what I wasn't interested in, but not so much yeah. about what I was interested interested yeah. in. Um, 
but uh, uh, enrolled in college for, for art classes uh, as a graphic design major, which I think a lot of people uh, tend to do because that's a job you can get in the arts where yes. you can make money, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, at about the same time that I got into graphics courses uh, at Lamar University, uh, I was also taking a life drawing class from Jerry A. Newman. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, there were advanced students in the class that were making these phenomenal figure drawings and uh, at that moment I realized that's really why I came to, to college. I want to learn how to draw like these people and, and make art like that, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so that was a turning point for me and then I really committed to it uh, and then, you know, entering graduate school and all that, uh, encountering yeah. new instruction. Uh, but that that sort of solidified things for me, I think, at that time, so, yeah, which was good. Yeah. Yeah, oh my gosh, it's, I'm sure that lends a lot of richness to your your teaching now at, at Glasso. Okay? Uh, yes, yes, uh, and uh, it's a great place to be. Um, uh, teaching has been uh, a new change for me, and maybe for the past uh, 10 years, I think, mm -hmm. uh, that's been what I do, uh, you know, sort of fund my, my art yeah. career, um, and, uh, you know, you, it's true, you, you learn from uh, the people that you uh, teach, mm -hmm. and, and also, I think, you know, you re-educate yourself about things that you have general knowledge of, but the knowledge becomes a little bit more specific. At least for me, I feel like I kind of have to, uh, you know, to just be on top of things. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and all that, but uh, uh, but you know, as a professional artist, I work in watercolor, I work in oil painting, and I try to juggle the two uh, media yeah. because uh, two artists that I admire from art history, or there's probably a ton more than I could mention, but uh, I always think about Winslow Homer, John Singer Sargent, and I guess we have to put uh, J.M.W. Turner in there too, and they're 19th century, um, yeah, but because they worked in watercolor and oil, uh, when I look at their paintings, I can see how they transfer their knowledge about oil painting to watercolor and back and forth, Yes, and so I feel like uh, it helps me as a painter to, to work that way as well. I was, so, you know, because that's yeah. one of the things I was going to ask you. I mean, uh, personally, just mastering watercolors to me is a miracle. <laughs> well, far from a master, I have to have to say that. Uh, and, and even oh, uh, even oil painting, there's just so much to learn about it. Um, oh, uh, yeah, true. It's all challenging, and I think uh, it's, it's good. I think that I have art to, uh, you know, to focus on because... Mm -hmm. uh, I think if I did it part time or maybe didn't spend as much time working with it, if I didn't sort of nurture whatever creative drive I have, yeah. and I think uh, you're very aware of this with all the artists that you know, okay. that it's you're almost lying to yourself yes. and, and it's no way to really live. No. And I, I have an inherent need that I have to get out of bed and, and sort of produce or create something. Uh, yeah. regularly and I'm one of those persons unfortunately that never feels like he gets anything done so so that I think is, is something uh, I should talk to someone about for sure. So, yeah. No I think a lot of us get into that. We're like, well, I don't know I mean I think so that people tend to think they're not doing enough or but uh, you know then I have to just remind myself just let it take the time it needs to take but just get in there and do it you know. Kind yeah, of thing, yeah. So. Um, well and uh, uh, that's the thing. I think for me, my philosophy is to try to work uh, every time you can, not just when you feel like it, because yeah. you never know when you're going to hit the mark. Boy, and there's true. days when maybe I don't, maybe I'm a little bit tired. I think I shouldn't, you know, wait till tomorrow. But yeah. uh, sometimes when I'm tired, I do better work than when I'm fired up, energized, and ready to go, uh, and yeah. everything's a flop. So yeah, uh, that's good. Yeah. That's interesting too. Yeah, you can't just wait for a good mood. <laughs> no, no, not at all. No, I, I can't do that. I, no, it's, it's, I'll, Good I'll, to hear that from yeah. you. Though. I I wanted to ask you, um, you know, uh, well, do you have do you have? I know there's something coming here. Uh, the it's the Art Walk, I believe, isn't it? Or yes, uh, Art Crawl. So here, uh, Mother Dog Studios uh, does uh, participate in the Art Crawl. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes, takes the lead on the organizing end. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's. Uh, first Saturday before Thanksgiving annually. Okay. That's usually when, when that happens. And uh, exhibition-wise right now, uh, nothing on the books. Had a recent studio visit uh, with uh, Sarah Foltz and Mariah Rockefeller from William Reeves. Oh Sarah gosh, Foltz Fine Art. Uh, yeah, they're great people uh, mm -hmm. and, and they do great things at the gallery with, with the artists that they show. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, learning a little bit about what they do with uh, historic art, uh, modern and contemporary, 
yeah. I think is, is just a great uh, thing for the city for what they do here. I just think so. Um, yeah. And so, so hopefully, you know, something will, will take place on the calendar soon. Yeah. But coming off of a group exhibition uh, at the Macedonian Museum of Contemporary Art mm -hmm. in uh, Thessaloniki, uh, Greece. Oh. And uh, Texas Eclectics was the name of that one. Oh. So 50 Texas artists uh, uh, were for participants and I was glad to be a part of that oh my, yeah. uh, uh, because it was exciting you know to have work overseas and mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so uh, you know uh, that's right now you know it's just time to work and and maybe yeah. plan be ready for the next thing I think yeah that's the, I, th I think maybe citywide there's more and more of an interest in uh, artists that were here early like maybe founding artists yes, in Houston. I'm seeing that. when I was great. a young artist in college and had a little bit of maybe uh, knowledge of what might have been taking place in Houston in say the 80s which mm -hmm. was before my time here uh, that was of interest but that was a driving interest or a call to come to Houston I yes, think, to, yes, to yes. see it was still affordable or more affordable then than it may be now I think yeah and, uh, <laughs> and and so it's interesting to learn about the history of the artists that were here so referring to Houston art history not so much as demolished history now but uh, yes yes, um, yes but but the people that I think uh, are active here now that were active here uh, before so many artists have moved here I, I think uh, has been great yes uh, and uh, and it, it's it's great to see their work uh, uh, on display in galleries and and, uh, and things like that so. I know I know I know uh, talking with uh, Richard Stout was yeah. so fascinating and just a little bit of that, you know, history going on here in Houston, uh, the art community. Well, and, and Richard's uh, not only a big part of it, uh, but he's he's seen a lot of it uh, as well. Uh, yeah. And he was also a teacher at the University of Houston. Yes. Uh, and and I have to say that uh, his classes were were challenging. They were like I have a lot of memories uh, from my time there, and a lot of them are from Richard's class too, because yeah. he really uh, challenged, uh, you know, a young art student that. Uh, maybe uh, back then in my 20s had more angst than I have now so to speak yeah, and uh, yeah. but it was great that I had the opportunity to work with him uh, while he was there mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he's been great at like keeping in touch over the years and all that yeah and, uh, so he's an amazing artist and amazing person I just saw his yes. retrospective uh, yes in, in the Beaumont uh, Art Museum of Southeast Texas in Beaumont yes. and uh, a lot of those paintings that I saw had only been seen by me in reproduction so to see the originals, uh, it was a big eye opener. It really oh, was. I, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. and love to to see him at at, uh, at openings when I see him from time to time. I see him at the gallery, uh, and uh, yeah. and and love you know talking to him because he's always got uh, good things to share for sure. So yeah, and stories. I think artist stories are are really uh, really great to hear. So. Oh my gosh, that's that's what this is about. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess so, so. Well, I want to thank you for letting me come here and talk with you and love that you were willing to share with, uh, with me and the viewing audience uh, your experiences and your beautiful work. Uh, it's, it's an honor to be here. Well, uh, I think that feeling is mutual. Uh, I think it's a great thing that you're doing and I really appreciate you investing the time and you know coming out to, to set up and, and, and talk, you know, have the Thank conversation. You. I think you. that's uh, that's the, the nice thing about all of it for me. Uh, so, uh, so uh, yeah. yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. I just, you know, if I didn't enjoy this so much, I certainly wouldn't be doing it. I believe <laughs> I don't that. Know what I, it is, I sincerely believe that. That might end someday, <laughs> but I don't know. Right now, it's just feeling really good. And of course, I do want to say to the viewers to please uh, do like, share, and subscribe uh, so we can make the, the numbers grow for the viewing audience and uh, people will see more of Houston artists, uh, which is the whole idea here. Uh, so yeah, we are signing out till next time, and thank you again. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> and bye. <laughs> Christ.